when we walk with the Lord in the light of His word, what a glory He shares on our way while we do His good will. He abides with us still and with all who You are welcomed in this preaching. This is the fourth part of the first preaching in the series called The Church Reformation History Series based on Genesis 10 and also Genesis 11. Let us pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, we come before you to praise you, to honor you, to exalt your holy, holy, holy name. We feel privileged to be in your presence with the word before us. And we are asking you to nourish our minds, our hearts, our lives. Please forgive us our trespasses. In Christ we pray. Amen. I'll read with you Genesis 10 verse 1 and also Genesis 11 verse 10 and also verse 27 and 32. Genesis 10 verse 1. This is the account of Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Noah's three sons, who themselves had sons after the flood. Genesis 10, Genesis 11, verse 10. This is the account of Shem. Then 27 uh, to 32. This is the account of Terah. Terah became the father of Abram, Nahor, and Haran. And Haran became the father of Lot. While his father Terah was still alive, Haran died in Ur of the Chaldeans. In the land of his birth, Abram and Naor both married. The name of Abram's wife was Sarah, and the name of Naor's wife was Milka. She was the daughter of Haran, the father of both Milka and Eshka. Now Sarai was barren. She had no children. Terah took his son Abram, his grandson Lot, son of Haran, and his daughter-in-law Sarai, the wife of his son Abram, and together they set out for Ur, from Ur of the Chaldeans to go to Canaan. But when they came to Haran, they settled there. Terah lived 205 years and he died in Haran. The point here is Genesis. 10 verse 1. It is the account of Shem, Ham, and Japheth, Noah's three sons, who gave birth to other descendants and ultimately to other nations. They are the original ancestors of the world history, of the international history. Now, when we have Shem, Ham, and Japheth as the sons 
of Noah. You will see what the Bible is doing here. Further on, in Genesis 10, or in Genesis 11, verse 10, then you have the account of Shem, excluding Adam accounts Adam nations of Ham and Japhet. So you will see the camera focus only on Shem. Shem's nation is zoomed from Genesis 11, verse 10. The, the camera zoom took Shem as a tribe, as a nation, and focus on it. That is from Genesis 11, verse 10. Then going down to Genesis 11, verse 27, then you get you got in Shem's account, in Shem's nation, descendants, offspring, the camera now focus only on terror, meaning from Shem, Ham, and Yafet. We uh, the, the, the Bible focus on Shem. Then from Shem, all the descendants of Shem, all the nations below under Shem, then the focus is on Terah's family and nation. That is where Abram was born and bred in Terah line. So that is Genesis 11 verse 27 downwards. So we want to look at this camera, at this focus, just before Genesis 12, just before the account of Abraham, we want to go along with the camera, along with the line of Shem, along with the line of terror. But we want to have the overview of what was going on in that world. Three things are clear. We'll be looking at the great civilizations before Abraham, before Genesis 12. Remember, there was great civilization before Abraham. Nimrod led Babel, Genesis 11, verse 1 to 9. Then Sumerian civilization, then replaced by Akkadian uh, civilization led by Sargon the Great from 3200 to 2300 BC. That is the Akkadian civilization after the Sumerian civilization. That is the first thing that we will talk about. The Akkadian civilization led by Sargon the Great. Then the Egyptian civilization led by the pharaoh, the pharaohs from 2700 BC to 2200 BC. That will be our focus. Then thirdly, the Amorite Empire. You can even say the Babylonian Empire, the new Babylonian Empire, just after the uh, Tower of Babel, there were Sumerian, Akkadian, and then Amorites with, who revived the uh, Babylonian Empire. We'll talk about that. But talking about the Amorites Empire, we'll also focus on um, Amurabi uh, as the king who led the Amorites. He was the sixth king of Amorites who was uh, the king of Babylon Empire from 1792 to 1750. So now, 
The first aspect, the Akkadian civilization after the Sumer civilization. The Akkadian civilization was led by Sargon, estimated 2300 BC to 1700 BC. Remember, the Sumerian were dominant in terms of culture, in terms of socio-economic uh, civilization. They were dominant in Mesopotamia around those times. But they were co conquered by Sargon, the great, the king of Akkadians. So now, these Akkadians, they replaced the priest-led kingdom of Sumeria by a king-led uh, empire of the Akkadians. So the Akkad Akkadians were the first world empire. But in that empire of Akkadians, you will see that the Sumerian culture and civilization were dominant still, even though politically the Akkadians were ruling. What it means is the socio-economic and cultural, including the religious aspect, were adopted by the Akkadians. The Akkadians adopted the Sumerian civilization and culture even religion. So now, during that time, many city-states, because they had city-states around, in and around Mesopotamia, they be benefited a lot from the Sumerian culture, from the Akkadian Empire. In terms of culture, religion, they were Sumerian. Of course, even after Sargon the Great, after his death, many city-states flourished. And Akkadian Empire started to collapse and was divided into two major Akkadian-speaking nations. The Assyrian on the north and Babylonians in the south. So now, two world empire, Assyrian and Babylonians in the south. So it was around that time, this is now the second aspect, it was around that time that we understand the Egyptian uh, civilization. Remember, the Egyptians, civilization was led by the pharaohs the egyptian civilization around those times 1300 bc to 2200 bc it was flourishing you will see that egyptians were the descendants of mizraim who was the son of Noah's son, Ham. So Mizraim in Hebrew is Egypt. So the hero of Egypt, Menes, later on, united the upper and the lower Egypt under Egyptian rule, under him under menace. So now, if you want to understand the history of Egypt, the, it is divided in three major kingdoms or phases. The old, the middle, and the new kingdom. Today, we are not going to concentrate on the middle and the new kingdom. We will focus on the old because it is during those times of Akkadian civilization, Babylonian civilization, that the old Egypt civilization 
flourished. It was called the age of Pharaohs. The age between 2700 to 2200 BC. We are talking of kingdoms before Genesis 12. Great civilization before Abraham. So the pharaohs were powerful rulers. It was the time of great pyramids. They were built in Egypt, even throughout Sumer, Akkadia, Babylon. You get all those kind of pyramids. It was during the, those times. It should be noted that while the Akkadians were invading and conquering uh, or were invaded or conquered by the Amorites empire, the Egyptians empire was also flourishing in the south. The Amorites, Babylonian empire, flourishing in Mesopotamian area, and the Egyptians flourishing in the south. So you will see that the Amorite Empire is called the Babylonian Empire because they, they worked from the south of Mesopotamia. The southern part of Mesopotamia was their headquarters, their capital. That is where old Babel of Nimrod was. Genesis 11, verse 1 to 9. That is where the old Sumer civilization was in the southern part of Mesopotamia. That is where the old Akkad uh, civilization was around uh, the southern part of Mesopotamia. Just uh, near the Persian Gulf. They rule from there. So now, I want us to focus in this third aspect on sixth king of Amorites or the Babylonian Empire under Hammurabi. This is the third aspect the well-known king of Amorites or of Babylonians was King Hammurabi, 1792 BC to 1750 BC. He was the sixth king of the Amorites or Babylonian Empire because you can use interchangeably those um, terms. He was a very successful king. He was successful military-wise. He was a successful diplomatic king. He negotiated with many city-states, especially in the northwest and also in the east. He was a good administrator. He was also good having a good system of collecting tax. He was good in trade, good in business, and also had a sophisticated agricultural economy. So you will see that one of the prominent highlighted aspect in his kingship is his legal code the code of law called Hammurabi code there were about 282 laws these laws were developed by compiling organizing and simplifying the existing law of that time 
These laws include many things. This law touches many aspects, including domestic aspect, social aspect, moral aspect, commercial aspect. So you will see that in the introduction of these laws, these inscribed, engraved laws, they were engraved, they were inscribed in a stone pillar. So even when it was uh, discovered, um, because it was engraved in a stone, so it was reserved, it was preserved indeed. So in the introduction of these laws, it was written, I quote, to cause justice to prevail in the land, to destroy the wicked and the evil, that the strong might not oppress the weak. That was the aim of uh, these laws, to cause justice to prevail in the land, to destroy the wicked and the evil, that the strong might not oppress the weak. More can be said about these laws. But these laws were read, they were taught, they were studied throughout his empire, uh, Hammurabi empire, even by ordinary people. I want to conclude. I want to conclude by saying, you will see that this great civilization of Sumer, Akkadians, Amorites, Babylon, and Egyptian civilization before Abraham, they had laws like the Hammurabi codes. Unlike God, who always make punishment to fit the crime and the criminal, the Hammurabi codes, laws, they usually bend on in terms of punishment because it depends on human status. If a person is rich or poor, it affects the law. That is the one thing that we, we see when the Hammurabi codes is compared with the law of the Lord. In terms of basic beliefs, whether you check the Sumerian, the Akkadian, the Babylonians, and the Egyptians, they were king-led. Of course, the Sumerians were priest-led. But their belief is that the king, the Akkadian, the Babylonian, the Egyptian kings were viewed as God in human form. God is personified. The kings were God on earth and they were worshipped. That is how they view their kings. They believed in many gods. Even when you check their creation story, they have story, they have narratives about creation, about Genesis 1. They had their own story and they were founded in Enuma Elis, which was founded in Nineveh. When you compare the creation story and also the paradise story and also the flood story, the Noah story, they, they have that account. It confirmed indeed the biblical account that that account was transmitted orally symbolically in a form of writing and those writings were found um, the remainings of them were found but now the main difference is a point of view the religious direction the point of view instead of worshiping one true living god they twisted because they believe in many gods 
They believe that God is impersonal, not trustworthy, indifferent, power monger. So you will see that they have the story, but because of direction, it was twisted. Even the cause of sin, according to them, it is because of the selfishness of God, not because of human cause, as the Bible pointed out. So they blame God for what is happening in the world. On the other hand, they praise human. They did not say human are causes of sin, but God is the cause of sin. So indeed, the Sumerian, Akkadian, Babylonian, Egyptians, they were advanced in arithmetic, astrology, geology, agriculture, great architecture of palace, temple, can be seen even today. Things which were done even before Abraham can be seen. They are evident even today. You go to Egypt, you go to uh, Iraq, Kuwait, you see those remainings. They were good also in trade and diplomacy. They were also um, good in trading gold, silver, tin, and texture. They were good in algebra, geometry, astrology, study, heavenly bodies, stars. But the direction was wrong. Instead of glorifying God, they glorify their own uh, kings. And they regard their kings as God in human form. The, the, the religious direction was a problem. They worship many gods. They worship their kings. They worship animals. They worship cats. In Egypt, you will see that those ten plagues were a direct attack to the gods of Egypt. Happy, god of Nile. When water turned to blood, Heket, goddess of fertile, when the frogs were there. So you can, you can mention all ten gods when God is revealing himself to the people. He wanted to uh, show that human view of God is wrong. We will study uh, the Egyptians uh, civilization just before and also in times of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, just before Exodus. That is what we are going to study next time. May God bless you.